The point I want to cover today is we're going to start off with the conversation starters. So we went over that a little bit last time, but we're going to go into that more in depth. Um, you can see here on your handout, we've got a few different scenarios. One is actually just going to some random person's door and knocking on it like we do when we go out at our soul winning times. We just go through the neighborhood and knock on doors and we talk to people. So there's a certain way that we generally start the conversation. And again, okay, just like everything else, this isn't the only way to do it. It's not like you have to follow this format only and you know, like a robot. It's all to give you ideas. It's all just to help you out. Um, it's the way that I do things and it's not the only way. Um, conversation starters. So there's one conversation you start at the door. Maybe having time with family could be another scenario. Um, friends or even being at work, different workplace environments or things like that uh, where it is acceptable, where it is appropriate. To, to be able to have these conversations. So those are just a few of the, the things and, and we'll kind of go over that a little bit. And then the other main point we're gonna cover today is avoiding rabbit trails. And when we do this, I'm gonna have Sebastian come up here and I'm gonna try to lead him down different rabbit trails so you can see how he responds to me and then we'll go over what, you know, kind of how we should handle that type of thing. Because the, these are two, I think, of the big stumbling blocks that people encounter with trying to give the gospel to someone. One is just getting the whole thing started at all. A lot of times, and I know what this feels like, you'll be sitting there, you'll be saying, oh, I, you know, I kind of want to talk about Jesus with this person. I want to talk about the gospel. I don't think this person's saved. But you don't quite know how to do that. You're just thinking like, well, I really, I want this person to be saved. I want, you know, I, I want to talk about Jesus, but it's not coming up. You're talking about the weather. You're talking about, you know, how have you been? You're talking about your families. You're talking about all kinds of other things. And in the back of your mind, you're thinking like, man, I'd really like to talk about Jesus. How do we do that? So here's some advice for that. And, and what you'll find is that you can apply this in just about any scenario that you're in. We'll start with the easy one, just at the door. Just, you know, hi, how you doing? We're visiting from Word of Truth Baptist Church and we're inviting people to our church. This is, this is normally what I say. It is, you know, we've got these invitations and I just say, hey, how you doing? I'm, you know, I'm David Burzens. I'm, I'm the pastor of Word of Truth Baptist Church. We're out visiting. I'd like to give you an invitation to our church. And I'll ask, do you, do you normally go to church anywhere? And just ask them where they go, you know, what, if they do or if they don't. Um, some people do, some people don't. It's fine. It, it, and ultimately, it doesn't matter where they go. Because then I just, I just get right into it right off the bat. And just say, well, hey, look, way more important than going to church. If you die today, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? Because that's an important question. And sometimes people will be like, maybe a little, like, what, like, what do you do? And like, asking me about heaven. Like, but you're already in the conversation. I mean, you, you just throw it out there and now, and now you're, the, I mean, that's like half the battle is just like getting started talking about Jesus, talking about salvation. Even if they think it's a little bit awkward, so what? We're talking about the gospel now. We're, we're on the right subject. It's okay. And, and remember that for no matter what situation you're in, even if it just seems awkward, if you can just say it, like I said, hey, I've said this before, once something comes out of your mouth, you can't take it back. What, you, know, you just blur it out. Like, well, what, about, you know, what do you think about Jesus or anything? Now you're on that topic. But there are easier ways to, to bring up a, the, the subject. At the door, it's easy because that's what we're out there to do. And, and normally, if someone comes to your house, you're thinking, what do you want? Right? What, what do you want here? Don't give me, you know, don't do like all of this just... Just chit chat, talk, like get down to business. Why are you here? Most people are like that. You don't want to be bothered. You're busy. You've got things going on. What are you doing here? What can I help you with? You know, well, I'd like to invite you to church, but way more important than that, if you die today, you're going to heaven, right? And, and that's, we're automatically then just, just, just on that path of, of talking about salvation and talking about Jesus Christ. That is a great conversation starter when we go to a door. Now, let's say you find yourself in a situation and I believe this, that because uh, we've been in other family functions and situations where 
You go to a party and there's a lot of people around. Not always the best time to talk to, about the gospel with people because it, it, in a group, when, when you're sitting down at table and everybody's talking, I'm not saying not to do it, so don't take me wrong. Don't say you can't talk about the gospel in these situations. It's just a lot harder because you'll get a lot of people involved maybe. Whereas if you can talk to someone one-on-one -on -one or maybe two, you know, like one or two people, you can have a much more coherent conversation. You can just be talking with each other back and forth. And ideally, you'll have an opportunity where you are alone with somebody. It's not some big circus atmosphere. and Because I know we've gone to parties and it's like, you're talking to this person for a couple of minutes and then that person for a couple of minutes and this person for a couple of minutes. It's not a good environment to be able to look. Because this is serious. This is something that people need to be able to think about. It's not just... Um, flippant when, when, when we talk about Jesus in the Bible. Like it's, it, it needs to have given proper consideration, proper thought. So the situation you're in ought to be able to allow for that, for someone to, for, to have a serious conversation, to sit down and, and, and kind of hopefully be uninterrupted and, and be able to have a good conversation. Um, so let's just put ourselves in an environment like that and say, okay, you have a relative come over to visit, a brother, a sister, a mom, a dad, a, you know, uncle, aunt, whoever. Someone comes over and it's not a bunch of chaos, but you actually have an opportunity to talk to someone. Well, normally you're going to find yourself talking about things, catching up and, and normal stuff that you talk to. But a good way to bring up the gospel in Jesus is because most people will talk about what have you been up to or what are you doing? And this can be done with family, friends, coworkers. What are you doing this weekend? I'm going to church. My church has this event going on. My church does that. So you, now all of a sudden, just by asking, what did, what did you do or what are you doing? Oh yeah, I went to church this weekend or I'm going to church this weekend or there's this new movie coming out that my church put on. I'm going to go look at, watch that or whatever. Whatever it is, there's so many different things where you just bring up church as part of your activities of what you're doing. Now, once you get on that church subject, great statement well, hey, you know, do you go to church anywhere? I love my church. I love, you know, we, we do all this stuff. I love my church. Do you, do you go to church anywhere? And now you're, well, okay, that's great. Even more important, do you know for sure you're going to heaven when you die? And there you are. And now you're starting off the gospel. So it's really not as hard as you might think to, to, to bring up these conversations and talk about, but you want to be able to just lead into the conversation in a natural way, where especially when you're talking to people you know, you don't want to, it's not going to be at the door like, hey, you know, someone just shows up at your house or your friend, or they're just like, do you know if you're going to heaven when you die? Like the minute they walk in the door, you don't have to do that, okay? You can, you can have regular conversation and then just get, in, get into church and talk about church. Always more important than church, though. More important. If you never came to church, do you know for sure if you're going to heaven when you die? Are you 100% sure about that? And then we lead into, you know, based on their answer, they can say, yes, yes, how do you know? Or no, I don't know, can I show you how? And, and there we go, and you're in it. And um, so that's our conversation starters. And that, like I said, that could work for at the door or with family, with friends, coworkers. I mean, I don't know, it's kind of hard to think of other situations. Coworkers. Um, use your discretion at this. Some companies, the bo now, I believe this. I believe wholeheartedly, obviously the gospel is the most important thing in the whole world because a soul is going to heaven or hell based on whether or not they put their faith in Christ. However, when you are hired to do a job for somebody else and you're working for them, they are paying you money to do a specific job and if they have certain rules set up, you know, you are at choice to work for that employer and you ought to respect the rules they put in place. If they do not want anyone talking about religious stuff at your job on their time when you're getting paid, then I don't think that you should do it. And if, you know, if that's something that you can't handle, work for someone else that does allow that. But they're paying you money to do certain tasks and do certain jobs. And, um, you know, you shouldn't be stealing from them 
even though it's a good thing to give the gospel to someone, if you're just taking your time then out of work and you stop working because you want to get this person saved, that's not right to just do that. You need to be able to, to work these things out. Now, a lot of people have work where maybe you're, you're driving to a job site together. There's time where you're just alone with someone and it's not like some strict policy. You know, I mean, you could talk to people about things, about what you believe. Like, I, I don't think any work has a, has a policy against what did you do this weekend and talking about church. And if, and if you know, I mean, these are the types of ways you could get involved in the conversation. If someone's interested, great. And look, if they're not interested, you're not going to cram it down their throat anyways. If someone's not interested in talking about the Bible and Jesus Christ, you're not going to convince them to get saved no matter how much you try to, to force them to have the conversation. So you let it go. I mean, if, if someone's not interested, and we do that all the time out the door. I mean, people not interested? Okay, fine, bye. You know, like, have a good day. It's fine. You, you know, they need, a person needs to be willing to have the conversation to begin with if you're even going to get anywhere with them. You're not going to change their mind by trying to force it down their throat. Um, so those are our conversation starters. And now the second point, I'm trying to be real brief with this, avoiding rabbit trails. Um, very easy to get distracted from the main purpose of showing the gospel, showing eternal life, and showing its faith alone. Because, and, and this is especially easier to happen, or, or, or more likely to happen when you're talking to someone you're comfortable with, a family or a friend, family member or a friend, um, they'll feel real free to start asking you questions as you're maybe going through the Bible. And they'll say, well, wait, well, what about, you know, what does the Bible say about marriage? You know, what was looking on the news? What, what do you think about that? Or what does the Bible say about, you know, and they'll start asking other questions. Now, the common reaction is going to be, hey, I'm going to try to show them all of this. Oh, well, I believe this and this and this about marriage. And then, but, but then what about, and they'll bring up another topic. You know, well, what does the Bible say about this? And you have a tendency to want to answer their questions and, and, and do that. But when you do that, what, what ends up happening invariably is now all of a sudden you're not even talking about the gospel anymore. A person's not going to get saved because they know what the Bible says about marriage between a man and a woman or anything like that. that that's not where their salvation is going to lie. And ultimately, all of those, these others, I might call them like a side issue, don't matter. I've even had someone ask me like, what does the Bible say about aliens? You know? And hey, that's a thought that's going on in their head. You know, I'm talking to them, we're trying to talk about the Bible. What does the Bible say about aliens? And like, they really want to know. It's a genuine question. Well, that has nothing to do with whether or not you're going to heaven or hell. So, you know, let's get, let's get through this. And it's easy to get distracted and to get pulled apart, but, but we need to be careful to make sure we stay on course and just stay on our target, stay on. The goal is to get a person saved, is at least to preach them the gospel so that they can have the information and the, the knowledge to just to understand what that free gift is in order to receive it. So you politely, tactfully stay on course. What I'll usually do when I'm talking to someone and say, hey, I would love to answer that question. Let's talk about that a little bit later. I kind of want to finish the, you know, the point I was making about, about Jesus or about being saved or what, wherever we're at. You know, um, I, I will answer all the questions that you have to do. Let's just get through this first and then we could talk about that in a little bit. I kind of want to stay focused on this subject um, is a real good way to just kind of dodge the question. And look, you could have all of the answers to these questions. You still want to dodge them until the end because the goal is, is the salvation of that person. The goal isn't just to answer every question they've ever had about God. Um, now there are a few times where a question is relevant and pertinent for salvation. Like if someone's saying, well, you know, I've always heard that hell's not a real place. That it's just figurative, you know, that it's just like we actually have hell here on earth. What do you think about that? Okay, that's very relevant to the gospel. That's very relevant to understand. No, there is a real place of punishment. There is a real place of torture. And then you can go a little bit more in depth on those subjects. But if it's just completely irrelevant to the script, to, to the gospel, to getting saved, then always try to, try to let that happen later. And then the last point, and this is especially at the door more than anything, is don't let someone teach you about salvation and teach you about the Bible, teach you about everything. 
we go there to teach them. You are the you you are the one that's saved. You are the one that knows that you're saved and going to heaven. And the reason why you're giving them the gospel is because they don't, whether they know it or not. You know that you're saved. You know that you've accepted that free gift. You know that it's only through Christ. You know that it's just by faith alone. And this can be, you know, it's, it's a little nuanced, but you want to make sure in your mind that you're not just letting them run the conversation and tell you what the Bible says when you're trying to get them saved. Um, I am probably a little bit over polite when it comes to listening to people. I, I don't, I don't like to be rude and to interrupt and to, you know, I'll let people say what they have to say because I, I am having a conversation. But there is a difference between hearing somebody's thoughts, you know, and, and engaging in conversation and you're both speaking. There's a difference between that and someone just telling you, well, you know, the Bible says this and this and this, and you know that actually you have to do this to be saved and actually you have to, you know, that's a different conversation because now you are no longer conversing, they're preaching at you. So, and this is a lot more common, I think, at the door than any place else um, with people that you don't know that are going to want to try to teach you the Bible. So try not to let that happen. If you notice that start to happen, just say, okay, well, you know what? Someone else is going to want to listen to you. You can cut it short at that time if they're just getting group preaching to say, you know, actually... The Bible says this, can I just show you? Because I want to show you what I believe first. And then we could talk about what you believe or whatever. And if they, if they can't handle that, if they don't want to do that, then you could just, just close the conversation and be done with it. Because no good is going to come out of them teaching you a false doctrine or, or false salvation. And if you're not able to preach the gospel to them, again, it's, it's going to be fruitless. So um, watch out for that. Now, I'm going to have an example. I'm going to have Brother Sebastian come up here. And we're going to, um, I'm going to be the person that he's going to try to give the gospel to. So you'll see, now let me, you'll see how Sebastian deals with this. So I'm going to give him a few questions, a few, you know, try to get him on rabbit trails and things like that. But he'll start off just uh, trying to, trying to give the gospel to me. Let's, so let's just say we're at, uh, we're at work. All right, we're sit, we're standing around the water cooler. <laughs> so, how you doing? How you doing, man? How, how are things going? Good, good. How's your weekend? Good, good, man. I was I went to this party Saturday night. Oh man, it was crazy. Whew. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't wake up until like two o'clock on Sunday. Oh wow. Nuts. Oh, well, how about you? What what have you been up to? On Sunday, I went to church. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's like normally what I do is just go on church, go to church. Usually twice on Sunday. You go to church anywhere? No, not really. No. Okay. Have you ever gone to church? Like I did when I was a kid, you know. But do you believe in the Bible or anything? Yeah. Yeah, some of it. Some of it. Yeah. Right on. Well, hey, more importantly than the church, you know, I also ask people, you know, if you were to die today, are you 100 percent sure you're going to heaven? <laughs> Probably not. Is that something you ever thought about? Yeah, I don't know. No. Well, the Bible shows us and, and tells us there's a real easy way to, you know, go to heaven. Can I spend like five minutes and just show you? Sure. You know. Um, so Romans. Obviously, we're in the New Testament. So wait, I was saying, so do you even believe like the Old Testament? Like, do you... yeah, I believe you know Bible, you know, all the Bible, Old and New Testament. Huh. Yeah. Well, so like even the stuff like about you know putting people to death. I mean, even for like little things, you believe that? Yeah, well, here, just hear me out real quick. Let, let me just show you what the Bible says about salvation. Okay. I'll, answer, I'll answer all your questions, because there, there's a lot of stuff we can talk about in the Bible, right? Yeah. 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 But I think salvation is probably the most important, because knowing whether you're going to heaven or hell it is, you know, I mean, important, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want to go to hell? No. <laughs> no. No, of course not. Well, afraid, so, hear me out. Yeah, but see, like, is hell even a real place? Like, I, you know... I, 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 I'm not sure. Well, the Bible really says true. that hell is actually in the center of the earth. So, what have you ever heard of Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, the Bible says that that Jesus, you know, died, all right, lived, or was born of a virgin Mary, right, lived a perfect and sinless life, right. He he was actually God in the flesh. The Bible says that Jesus was God. God became a man and dwelt among us. 
right? And, and the Bible says that when he died, when he, when he was crucified, right, because he died for the sins of the whole world, mm -hmm. he actually spent three days and three nights in hell. Well, but, I've never heard that before. Yeah, so, but here, look at this. So the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So it's just saying that we all come short of God, right? No one's perfect. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Do you think you're perfect? Yeah. No, yeah, of course not. Like, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. And that's exactly what the Bible said, is that we all come short of God's glory. Um, the Bible says here, for the wages of sin is death. Do you know what a wage is? No. Yeah. Where I work, yeah. right? You, you earn a wage, right? Yeah. The Bible's saying here that because we sin, right, because we're not perfect, like the other verse said, and because we sin, our wage or what we have earned for that is death. Mm -hmm. Now, when the Bible's talking about death, it's not just talking about, you know, us physically dying. It's actually talking about a place. Our, that, and that's where our soul is going to be going. And in Revelations, you know, this kind of goes back to whether hell is oh, real. Man, Revelation was all kinds of crazy stuff in that book. Oh, I know. So, like... Oh, so what do you think about the end times, man? What do you think is going to happen? Because I heard like Mark of the Beast, like all that stuff's in Revelation, right? Like, yep. Like, like, like um, you know, with the microchips and stuff, and the one world government, the new world order. I've been hearing all about that. I mean, like, I know. Like, there's, that, yeah, there's so is much. Is that in the Bible? There's so much stuff out there, you know. Um, a lot of it is, you know, like uh, the Re book of Revelation is, is a, a prophecy, you know, of God. And, but it's so God. hard to understand. Like, I tried reading Revelation before, even though yeah, I don't really go to church that much, but I tried reading it, and there's like all this stuff about, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just weird. I mean, horses and, and well, check out what this, all kinds of... Check out what this says in Revelations. Uh, I, I'm sure you'll find it fascinating. Right here, it says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found, written in the right. book of life. Good job. So, you all see what's going on there. Then this could be like a real life conversation. That was great. So, I tried to stump him up a few times, <laughs> right? And I really like the, the last one you're saying like, well, hey, check this out because you'll really think this is interesting. I'm trying to get him off on just like whatever, you know, <laughs> Just, just all kinds of other subjects. And people will do that. And, you know, they're listening, and it's not that they're not listening, it's not that they're not paying attention, but you want to stay focused. And it's so easy, especially if there's something you are interested in, to get sidetracked on something else. I mean, end times prophecy, right? This is, there's all kinds of interesting things that, that we could go on and on and talking about. Like, oh, yeah, look at this is going to happen. That's going to... Trying to stay focused on salvation. So, um... Yeah, I mean, really good job. I like the way you handled this. That was, but that's what we want to try to do. Well, um, is got to kind of think on your feet too. Yeah. It's like, because I've never no. heard anybody say that to me. I was like, oh man, like, how do I do it? Right. That, you know? so, right. <laughs> and this is why we're here to practice, because those things do happen. Sometimes things will happen that that you don't expect. Now, with as with everything, you know, the more you practice and kind of do things, the better you'll get, the more comfortable you'll get. I don't want you to get um, intimidated, excuse me, by even just by this scenario that we kind of played out here. I don't want you to think that like, oh man, that's way too difficult. I don't know. Start with just the basics. Don't, you know, like as we do these classes, we're going to be working on some things that, that are going to be helpful, but they're maybe even a little bit more advanced. Like some, they're going to be all in the spectrum of, of some of the, the longer you do things, the more you'll be able to fine tune the way you do them. What's important is that we start off with the best. Start off just trying to get the conversation out there. Look, you're not going to be perfect the first time or the second time or the third time going through this. You're going to be nervous probably. You're going to, you, you, you know, it's not going to come easily. There's going to be some, some, some struggles in working through it and that's fine and that's good and that's normal. Um, don't let any of that intimidate you or scare you or think you can't do this. God will use you, and I've mentioned this last time, I mentioned it again, the first time I ever got another person saved by, by leading them to Christ, I was tongue-twisted, I dropped my Bible, dropped invitations all over the place. I mean, I was a nervous wreck, okay? 
but it's not my skill and my ability and everything else that gets a person saved. It's, it's the power of God's word and God willing to use. He said, with a, with a stammering lips and with another tongue, I will speak unto this people. He chooses people, he chooses all of us to, to preach his word. And now, obviously, you could get better at it, and, and you know, it's, it is something that, that the more you do, you will become more comfortable with, and, and, and you know, maybe be, you, you'll be used more of God. Right? But he'll still use you no matter where you're at, is my point. Like God can use you whether you're brand new at this and you're really nervous and everything else, or whether you've been doing it for a really long time. Now, you'll become a better instrument for God the more you know, the, the more you study and the more you're prepared and the more you're able to do for him, he'll be able to use you to do greater things and more things. But he can still use you no matter where you're at. So stick with it, try not to get intimidated and these are all geared to just to help you to overcome some of the some obstacles, some of the weird things that might come up.